Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Jackie and I have an amazing transformation for you today. I took this piece that was headed for the dump and transformed it into something beautiful. First things first, there was some really scary yuckies on the inside. You guys, I don't, I don't know what this is. Um, I don't know that I want to know what it is, but I took it out front and hosed it down. I wish that I had recorded it, but at that point I was still thinking that it was gonna be garbage. So I took it back around back and decided to go ahead and just rip that, those sides off anyway because that veneer damage was so bad. So I just went ahead and ripped it off and I replaced it with some new quarter inch underlayment. I'm taking this three in one tool or actually I think it's a five in one tool whatever this handy dandy little scraper doodads called and getting these extra pieces of veneer off so if you notice the ends of these tools have a metal spot and that is for you to be able to tap your hammer in like I'm doing here to get the rest of that loose so it just comes right off it was I don't know if it has been sitting out for a while or what actually it has been sitting out <laughs> it's been sitting out back of the shop which thankfully considering those questionable spots so i'm sanding it smooth and we just want it it doesn't have to be totally perfect because like i said we're covering it back up i'm gonna cut my underlayment right here so i've measured the sides and just set my table saw to the correct width and now i'm gonna have to trim off the excess off the bottom so I'm just double checking here for, you know, that my, my measurement and cuts were accurate. And it was. Measure twice, cut once, right? So now we're just smoothing out some glue. I'm using that same, or actually no, this is just another little spatula. So I'm smoothing out that glue because you wanna make sure that your glue is edge to edge here when you're replacing these. Because if you just like put, you know, put your glue on in a line, then you're just not gonna get the best adhesion. And the glue is really what's holding this piece together. Yes, I'm gonna put some brad nails in here to hold it firmly. The glue is what's really doing the job. So you wanna make sure you get that spread very nice and evenly edge to edge. Okay, listen, if you guys have a brad nailer, especially the Ryobi one, if you're not aware, you need to put some grease in that thing every now and then. You saw me there a few minutes ago, pop the top open and it was just, it's pretty dusty and it really needs to be greased up. I don't have any on hand, so I had to go grab my pen nailer. Again, this is not where the strength is coming from. The strength is coming from the glue. So the pin nailer is just gonna be that additional holding it in place as it's drying, okay? All right, I'm filling the holes with Dixie Belle mud and gonna let that dry and then sand it smooth and you won't even see any of those holes. Look at those new clean sides. All right, now it's time to take care of this top. You guys, this thing, for that, that surface to be like so broken, I cannot believe I had such a hard time with this. Like I was going in here hardcore with some 80 grit sandpaper and I finally just brought out the chemical stripper because I could not, I was going through sandpaper like crazy and just couldn't get it. So here I'm just doing a second coat. And I love this little Dollar Tree square brush. If you guys don't have some of these, they are super handy to have in your stash. And this only took about 10 minutes. And then I cleaned it up with some mineral spirits to make sure we got all of that, um, what do you call that stuff? Stripper off. <laughs> so sanding this smooth here. I wanna get those sides nice and smooth. And then we give that top one more good sanding with some 220 grit just to make sure everything's nice and smooth. And wiping off the excess dust because of course we don't want that texture in our paint. Now it's time for some Dixie Belle Boss. This product is going to ensure that the orangey tones of this wood is not gonna come through and cause bleed through in my white paint because this piece is gonna go white. I'm gonna use cotton by Dixie Belle. So this is just a little extra insurance for me to make sure that we don't have any bleed through uh, once that white paint gets on there. All right, you guys, I've put my Dixie Belle cotton in my critter spray gun. And I know you guys are gonna ask, so I'm gonna link it below and let me know if you would love for me to do a critter video. I actually filmed one last summer but for some reason it got discarded. I don't know if I just didn't like it or what happened, but I'll be glad to do another one. 
Okay, so you can tape off your drawers if you want to. Um, I really just felt like, you know, since I'm using Dixie Belle, it sands easily. So if I get any little bit of overspray, then I'm just gonna sand those off and not go through the hassle of taping. Now, if I was using Fusion, I would certainly tape off my drawers because with that built-in top coat, it cures harder, faster, in my opinion. Okay, so I forgot to mention that I do like to do a light sanding in between coats. It's super fine sanding pad, just enough to knock off that tiny little bit of texture before your second coat. And then when that's all finished, I am distressing here. So I'm just very lightly going along the edges. This is not a very heavy distress. This piece just, you can see the ridges, you know, in the face of the drawers. So I just wanted to very lightly go around those lines to kind of highlight them just a little bit. All right, now for the super fun part. We are gonna glam it up. So I'm taking a damp paper towel here. Just, I like those Viva paper towels because they're stronger and they don't really leave any lint behind. So I use those to wipe down and then we're gonna add a transfer. So this is the label ephemera. Now, if you watch Teresa with Our Green Acres, you know that she loves this transfer and she likes to cut it apart and use portions of it. So I thought, you know what? I wanna show you guys what this thing looks like put together on a piece somewhat as a whole. You can see I've cut a few pieces apart here and there. So I like to have a razor blade handy to kind of maneuver on the uneven surfaces of the drawers and just move, move it around a little bit as needed. So I took this portion and moved it down just slightly in order to get it in between the drawers. And so there's a little bit of the transfer there on the frame. I just felt like it made it look more fluid. Um, if I had taken it apart and just put it on the drawer fronts, I feel like it would have been a little choppy looking. So again, just taking my little towel there and wiping off any dust. And I'm using Dixie Belle's No Pain Gel Stain in Colonial Black to give this top a darkened look. So I didn't love the way that that turned out there. So you'll see later on that a second coat of gel stain really did the trick and toned down that yellow. All right, now we've got to add some flowers. I'm going to use an older transfer called Redoute 4. Redoute 4, I don't know, I don't speak French whatever, you guys know what I mean. Anyway, it comes in a big sheet like this. So this particular one was recently remade and it is now in the pad format and it comes in eight sheets. So you get more floral for your bang. Well, hello, Lainey Kay. Do you guys hear her little feet coming in here? <laughs> so I'm just going through and cutting these up, placing them however I feel like they just kind of flow and I kind of want them to just flow around the label ephemera transfer. Oh, there's my helper. She had to have her own stick, by the way. She loves to do anything and everything I'm doing. Second coat of gel stain does the perfect trick. And you go over the first coat of gel stain just as if it were paint. So just taking my rag and going back over it a second time, wiping back excess, and here is the finished product. What do you guys think? Tell me what you think below. Listen, I know this is a little bit over the top. It's a little bougie for some people, but that's okay. It's fun to do different styles every now and then. Um, you know, if you're a reseller especially, Yes, we want to do things that we love, but we also want to do things outside of our comfort zone and outside of our box sometimes because that can open up our, just a whole new market of people. So, you know, just, it's fun to do something that you wouldn't normally do. So keep that in mind sometimes. Thank you so much for watching. I am so grateful for you all and I will see you next week.